My Maintenance. What a lovely conversation we have to share. Judy Morosi. Judy Morosi is an Australian businesswoman. She became a public figure in the 1970s. Like, that is 45 to 50 years or so ago when she was the principal private secretary to the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia in the Whitlam Labor government, Jim Cairns. Of course, that caused a kerfuffle. There was a, a powerful woman in an influential position and their relationship was called into question. But well after that, Junie has continued her foray into health, well-being, and carving a road in life that suits your own way of finding fulfilment. Good morning to you, Junie Morosi. Good morning, Libby. It's good to talk to you. Junie, you've always had interesting views on maintaining one's health and well-being. Do you think that we embrace pleasure enough in life? Um, no, I don't. I think uh, pleasure is highly misunderstood. I do feel, and I have felt this way for 50, 60 years, that ours is not a pleasure um, society, that, that in fact it's anti-pleasure. What do you mean by that? Well, to me, a pleasure is something of, of the body, and um, I think we have twinned it with all sorts of things. Um, for example, our bodies are pretty controlled. We worry about diets and, and uh, all sorts of things through the years. It has become exercise. Uh, and discipline, running, and so on. I I feel that our bodies know what we need, and it is important to make that connection. Um, it's fine to have leisurely activities, but have you noticed that a lot of our leisure activities are now moving toward nature. Yes. Um, I believe that we had lost that connection and we are searching for it. Um, there is a lot of pleasure in just being in nature. Hmm? Is that what you like to do, Junie, at, may I say, 86 years of age now? Do you still have a a loose routine whereby you immerse yourself in nature? Uh, yes, I do. I'm 87 this month, and I walk every morning fairly leisurely. I don't uh, race or anything. Some days I just enjoy the weather, and Canberra is... I'm very fortunate to live in a very beautiful city. I only have to walk around my neighborhood, and I don't do that much of it, half an hour a day, um, but nature is very present in Canberra, and you can really enjoy it. Are you also suggesting perhaps that we put too many rules and regulations on our way of living ethically, that that suppresses pleasure? Things like, say, monogamy. Oh, <laughs> yes. I, I've always felt that. Um, I think we have too many uh, rules, which laws, which we inherited from our forefathers when churches were much more uh, powerful than they are today, although they still are, because we carry in our bones the anti-pleasure. I mean, go back to things like... Uh, flagellation and stuff like that, and the hatred of the body, which we think we have overcome. Um, and I believe that we have shed the more obvious traits of that consciousness, but uh, we still carry uh, unconscious and sometimes very conscious uh, tyranny of the body. Uh, you can't have thousands of years of 
literally hating your body and suddenly change. Mm. Mm. Your guest in Mind and Body Maintenance this morning is Junie Morosi. Uh, we met her 45 years or so ago as the Private Secretary to Deputy Prime Minister in the Whitlam Government, Jim Cairns. She was controversial then just for being there. Is that right, Junie? Do you think you were controversial just for being there? <laughs> I, I, w- I was once told by a friend in the 70s when uh, he refused to have me meet his wife, and he was a good business friend. Um, and I I said, what have I done? And he said, just breathing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> just breathing. Yes. Yeah. So I guess you're right. <laughs> just being a str- mean just- in such a controversial time. Mm. I wonder if it's possible all these years later if you could... Is it possible to condense it into what happened? We've seen strong relationships between Peter Credlin and Tony Abbott since that was imputed to be a form of sexual manipulation involved with that. Well, uh, I think it was just an idea, um, um, a morality thing. Uh, women, I had great difficulty keeping my maiden name. So that should tell you a lot. <laughs> right. um, in, I think I was one of the first women in Australia to get a passport in my own name. Um, secondly, in 50 years ago, to have uh, a woman, an Asian, uh, just to be there was startling to a lot of people. And to be a woman in a position never held before by a woman uh, in the deputy prime minister's office, I guess, was a shock. And I myself think that perhaps I was a prototype of what Australia would be someday. I have nine nationalities running in my blood. So we are a multi And um, I guess I was ahead of my time. <laughs> mm. You were ahead of your time. Yes. Yeah. And so in this time now, in the time of COVID, can you reflect upon how you maintained your peace of mind through a controversy that was not of your making if you became a flashpoint for it because you were different? Yeah. Uh, I had um, done by then uh, perhaps 20 years of yoga, so meditation was natural. And... Um, I've always had a positive attitude. I choose to be happy. And although Parliament and the Labour parties and the political parties were seemed to be terribly unhappy, it, uh, I wasn't. <laughs> that takes extraordinary strength of mind, Jenny. <laughs> well, when you've done yoga for 20 years, it's not that difficult. And at 87, coming up to 87. Well, <laughs> I've switched yoga for Tai Chi because it's not as easy to do things on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Tai Chi is good. I keep my positive attitude. I choose to be happy. I listen to my intuition rather than just what people say. Um, meditation, contemplation, affirmations twice a day, <laughs> maintain social contact, um, and I eat organic food, 
about 90% of the time. It doesn't, when I, it doesn't suit when I go out to dinner or to a party or something, I don't worry about it. <laughs> so I guess uh, you look after yourself, you listen to yourself, you yes. maintain yourself and you embrace pleasure. Yes, indeed. Uh, pleasure is of, of the body and so is truth. You know, when you hear something, if your intuition is working, it resonates in your body, you know it's true. Jeannie Morosi, such a pleasure to speak with you this morning. A pleasure to talk to you. You know we're in lockdown now. <laughs> I know. It, it sounds, it's terrible that I'm chuckling, but um, I sort of feel that all of this will have a good outcome because we're being given an opportunity to go into ourselves and maybe we'll learn to contemplate and meditate and just listen to ourselves. Hmm. Develop a bit of mental resilience, mental, yeah? Mental and re resilience, good words. Can I have three more good words, Junie, just to take into the day? Um, hmm. I suppose for me it's to remind myself to be happy and cheerful and to spread the light. And for that, I have to be the light. And that's not always easy, but it's doable. Ginny Morosi, mentor, elder, thank you. Thank you. It's lovely to talk to you. Bye. Bye-bye. It's 21 minutes past nine. <laughs>